Welcome viewers to TV Box Stop. On today's video I have an Intel Mini PC from Minisforum and this is their latest model called the GN31. This model is the first of its kind to achieve audio compatibility with Android x86. Don't be confused, I will explain in the video. On this channel we have seen great mini PCs with great performance from Minisforum and in this latest release it's no different. In this video, I will be focusing on how to use this PC as an Android TV box by installing a second operating system and you will see why the GN31 is like no other. So stay tuned, you have more after this. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. I will start today's review with a look at the box that it's packed and shipped in. The box is professionally well labeled and it ensures that your product is safe during shipping. To the back you have some specifications. It shows that the CPU is the Intel Celeron J3160 processor, running up to 2.24 GHz. The GPU is the Intel HD Graphics 400. It comes with 4 GB of DDR3 RAM and 128 GB of internal storage. It has support for up to 1 TB SSD via the internal storage expansion bay. It has Ethernet LAN speeds of up to 1000 megabits per second, dual band 5 GHz Wi-Fi support, and Bluetooth support. So without further ado, I will unpack its contents and continue. In the box, you have the GN31 itself. You get one HDMI cable. A 12 volts 3 amps power adapter. A mounting bracket and screws for mounting to the back of a TV or monitor. And the last item here is an owner's operation guide. And now a close-up look at its design and its input-output peripherals. The body is made of a matte black plastic anti-fingerprint material that's attractive and keeps away fingerprints. To the top you just have the Minisforum brand logo. To the back, you have one HDMI port, two USB 2.0 ports, one Ethernet LAN port, a headphone jack, a reset button, a power button, and the power adapter input jack. To one side, you have two USB 3.0 ports and a micro SD card reader. To the other side, you have a VGA display port with some ventilation holes, and there is also a cutout wedge for opening the top cover to access the SATA expansion bay. To the front, you have an LED power light. And below the PC, if you look closely, you can see that it comes with a CPU cooling fan with lots of ventilation holes. You have the screw holes for mounting the bracket, and there is also a removable cover for easy access to the M2 SATA SSD port, a feature I like very much in this model that is not available in previous models. I will now connect it to my 4K TV that I will be using as a monitor via HDMI for this review, and I will also pass it through my 4K capture card for high quality recording. But before I get to that, I will quickly install a 500GB SATA SSD into the storage expansion bay, which I will be using for my second Android operating system that will allow me to use this PC as an Android TV box. So I'm back, and for the sake of time, I have already logged into Windows and installed all my programs so I can get directly into the important stuff that really matters on this mini PC. The first area I would like to focus on is the system information and Windows activation. You would want to ensure that you are running a licensed version of Windows, and the hardware that you paid for is registering correctly in the device information. So the first thing I will do is open Windows Basic System Information tab to check for Windows license activation. Here under System you have some basic information about the manufacturer, CPU and memory. 
It shows that the manufacturer is Bestar Tech, and the model is the GN31. The CPU is the Intel Celeron J3160 running at 1.6 GHz. On the box it says that the CPU speed is 2.24 GHz, but that is actually the boost clock speed. The 1.6 shown here, is the base clock speed that will be used most of the time. It has a total of 4 GB of RAM, and this is the available unused memory. The system is a 64-bit operating system, running on an x64-based processor. Below here under Windows Activation it shows that Windows is activated. That's a good sign, and let's move on to some more details. To briefly dig a little deeper into its hardware information, the ADA64 Extreme app shows the same basic Windows 10 system information, and that it has DirectX version 12. The CPU and RAM information in this section shows the CPU speed is 2.23 GHz, but this is the boost speed and not the base speed as you will see in the CPU benchmark. The GPU is the Intel HD Graphics 400 Tricore Graphics Processor, and the audio adapter is the Realtek ALC269. Under Storage, here you can see both the M2 and SATA SSDs registering and both drives are functioning OK. Under Network it shows that you have dual-band AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. And that's a brief overview of its system and hardware information, and I will now do a quick slideshow of its resulting benchmarks. So those were the benchmarks, and in comparison to TV boxes, mini PCs usually beat TV boxes hardware, which makes them great for what I am about to do next. But before I get to that, these are some of the things you can do on the GN31. You can use all Microsoft Office applications. Install Netflix from the Microsoft App Store and watch movies in HD and 4K quality. Watch YouTube in 4K quality. Play small Windows games. Take me alive, bounty hunter! So this brings to an end an overview of the Windows operating system. As indicated earlier in this video, my main focus with any mini computer is to see if it can perform as an Android TV box by installing a second standalone operating system, using an external SATA SSD connected to the storage expansion bay. I have already installed my external hard drive shown earlier, and installed the latest Bliss Android 9x86 operating system from the community. 
I placed a link on how to install Android x86 on external storage in the description area, as that is a whole separate video by itself. So now I switch gears and show this exciting way to apply this mini computer as a full-fledged Android TV box. So this is the Bliss ROM Android 9x86, and I am pleased to announce that the GN31 is the first mini PC to be compatible with all versions of Android x86. I can say this because I have tested all of them on this PC. This mini PC allows audio pass-through via the HDMI port, something no other mini PC I have tested was able to accomplish. This makes it ideal to act as a TV box without having to connect audio using the headphone jack. In my initial testing, there are two areas that need improvement. The first area is there is no Dolby Vision and DTS audio, which means there is also no HDR display which affects 4K video playback. The other area is that the OS needs optimization to play YouTube at the highest 4K resolution. Other than that, everything else performs at a high level with great performance scores which I will show in a moment. So this is the launcher of the Bliss ROM Android 9x86, and it has all the features of your favorite alternative launchers like Nova Launcher and ADW Launcher 2. It has a navigation bar and notifications bar for advanced navigation and multitasking, and it features long press pop-up app menu and drag and drop apps shortcuts using a regular mouse or air mouse. So we are now running Android on powerful Intel hardware, on a separate hard drive as a standalone operating system with your Windows installation untouched, which is quite an amazing development in the TV box community. To begin this segment, I will now show its root access information. It shows that Android x86 is rooted, running on Android 9 operating system. I also caution you in this custom ROM, not to update the super user app as it will crash the operating system. Not the Windows OS, but Android x86. The DRM information shows that you have Google Widevine Level 3 and no HDCP protection. This means that Netflix will only show in standard 480p quality. I will now show its system and hardware information under this operating system, only to see if there is anything different in the way the operating system utilizes the hardware. Under System it shows the manufacturer and the model of the PC. You still have 4GB of RAM, but the internal storage now shows 457GB from the 500GB after the installation and apps I have installed. It shows 4 plus, indicating that you have Bluetooth support. Under CPU information, it shows that the CPU is the Intel Cherry Trail. It's a quad-core CPU, and in this configuration it utilizes the full range of the CPU and it's clocked 2.24GHz which is great. Below it shows that you have a 64-bit environment with support for both 32 and 64-bit ABIs. Under display it shows the GPU as the HD Graphics 400 Branswell model, running at 700 MHz. It has a refresh rate of 30 Hz with OpenGL ES 3.1, and we will see in a moment how it performs in some treaty gaming. Under network, the information shown here is no fault of the operating system but the PC itself. It has been connecting intermittently, and the 5 GHz band does not want to connect. So the 2.4 and the LAN port works well. Under Android information, it shows the operating system as Android 9 Pi, and it also shows that the OS is rooted. Under thermal information, it shows the system holding steady at 51 degrees Celsius with the included cooling fan, and we will monitor it during gaming. Under Codex information, you have all the codecs needed for playing 4K videos, but like I said a while ago, these codecs are not optimized to this PC well enough to allow smooth 4K video playback or to produce HDR or Dolby display. And that's it for system and hardware information. And now a look at some benchmarks. The GN31 has a RAM copy speed of 5306 megabytes per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 462 megabytes per second and a write speed of 313. These are some high scores and I will reference them to my chart. The Antutu benchmark produced a score of 94,175. I was expecting a higher score, but the first part of the test did not initiate, and it skipped and went to the second part. 
so I'm unsure if this affected the score. The Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark produced a score of 1143 single core and 3435 multi core. This is also a good high score, but I don't think it surpassed all TV boxes. The Wi-Fi speed test produced the same results as in the Windows operating system, with the Ethernet LAN port achieving maximum download speed, and the Wi-Fi bands falling below. In the Treaty Mark GPU test it shows that you have Vulkan support, and it says that performance can be lower than expected on some devices because of unoptimized drivers. So this confirms my statement about the 4K videos and the Antutu benchmark score. These are the scores, and they are high scores but the Ice Storm Extreme did not max out like the GT King TV box, maybe with better optimization it would. And that's it for the benchmarks, I will enter the scores on the chart to see how it pans out. So when I entered the scores, the GN31 ranked at position number 4. This is not an official TV box so I made a note of that for persons viewing my chart. So that's it for the benchmarks, and now a look at some of the things you can do on Android x86. First you can sideload Netflix APK version 6.26.1 from any app store of your choice. Netflix plays in standard quality as shown in a movie description, and it has audio pass-through via the HDMI port. You can watch YouTube in 4K quality only on the Smart YouTube TV app. However, it plays smoothly at 1440p. YouTube Vanced and the Android TV version plays up to 1080p only. And of course you can play Android games. We were created. In summary, the Minisforum GN31 is the first mini PC to have audio pass-through via the HDMI port, Netflix working in standard quality, and YouTube in 4K quality under Android x86. They are getting closer and closer to a totally compatible mini PC that can run Android x86 operating system. The GN31 has come the closest thus far, and I recommend this model as the only model if you want what you saw in the video. I have come to the end of my review. If you are interested in the Minisforum GN31, it can only be found using the link in the description area. Remember this model is unique, and you will not get the same compatibility with Android x86 and other models. 
This is the first time I got such features under Android x86 to work in a mini PC, and I guarantee you that I tested all of the Android x86 operating systems and the compatibility with this mini PC is the same. Thanks for watching, remember to like this video, share it with like-minded friends, and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell, and see you in the next one.